In this presentation, we're going to set up sales tax and consider a sales tax calculation and method for calculating sales tax when we're using more of a cash basis type of system with the bank feeds within WAVE. So get ready because we're dropping in with WAVE. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars dashboard. We're going to start off by opening up our reports. We're going to go on down with the reports, opening up our favorite two reports, those being the balance sheet and the income statement. We'll start off with the balance sheet. So we're going to open that up and then we're going to be duplicating the tab up top, right clicking on that tab and duplicating it. We'll do the same for the income statement, going back to the tab to the left on down to the reports. And then we're going to be opening up that P&L, that income statement, that profit and loss. Same process. We're going to go back up top and right click on that tab. We're going to be duplicating the income statement. Then we're going to go to the balance sheet, which is the first tab we opened up. We're going to be changing the date to 2019. So we'll select the date drop down and 2019 and update that report. Then I'm going to go down and we're going to show the details on it. Then I'm going to go back to the first tab and we're going to be showing the uh, 2019 here as well. And then update this report and then I will show the details on that too. Now we're considering the sales tax option now and, and how you would be dealing with sales tax. Now note, you can set up the sales tax in the system. Let's just see how we would do that. We're going to go back over to the first tab and the sales tax is going to be in the settings. So I'm in the first tab. I'm going to go down to the settings, which is on the left hand side to uh, set up the sales tax. Then under accounting, we have the sales tax item. So we're going to go be under accounting. We're going to be selecting the sales tax. Next, we will create a sales tax in the upper right. So we'll create the sales tax. Now, I'm not going to get a lot of detail about, you know, how the how the sales tax work. And in essence, it's going to be obviously a, a tax on on sales. So let's just put in here. We're going to say the the sales tax. I'm just going to be sales uh, tax. I'm going to say California. Let's just say abbreviation. I'm going to say sales tax California description. I'm not going to have a description if we had a number. Then we, of course, we would need our number for the sales tax number, whatever that might be for the location we are at. In other words, every institution, of course, will have a, have you labeled as a number, your number to the institution. And then show tax numbers on your invoice. Uh, this, this tax is a receivable. This tax is a compound tax. So if you have questions about that, you want to talk to your accountant about, uh, about those items with regard to calculation of the sales, ta sales tax. This is going to be 9.5 uh, is the rate that we're going to be using. So I'm going to say this is in 9.5 and I believe it'll calculate that at 9.5% given the fact that we have a percent sign here. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. Then if you were to, to make an invoice, it should be assigning that uh, sales tax. So then let's go back over to the dashboard, which is usually where I would think that most people would be creating the invoice from. There's a couple different places that you can make an invoice from, but most of the documents that you might be doing if you're doing the full cycle accounting are going to be under the create here and then i want to create an invoice so let's just create a mock invoice i'm not actually gonna gonna complete it but just to consider the use of the sales tax on it now here's the invoice i'm not going to get into a lot of detail on it i'm just basically going to get down to the actual pricing of it let's just say the price is say 500 uh, what happened on the price we're going to say 500 and then the tax down here i'm going to assign the line at that 9.5 which of course will take the 9.5% of it. So if we were invoicing the clients, if we're using that invoicing setting, then of course 500 times 0 0.095, that's that 4750. Then we can use this process. Now, if we're on a cash basis system and we're kind of like uh, waiting until the, this information clears the bank in order to record the income, then you might not have the same invoicing process, but you might end up in a situation where you have to basically pay the sales tax. Well, in that case, what you might do is kind of set up your sales. If you got to calculate the sales tax is that you'd put it into the sales price, right? So if it was 500, you'd sell it at, at the 547.50. And then at the end of the day, when you have to pay the sales tax, you can look at what sales are actually in your income statement that are subject to the sales tax and then possibly uh, make the payment on it. In other words, when you make sales tax payments, you're going to have to collect the sales tax in theory and then pay the sales tax periodically, either quarterly or, or uh, yearly or monthly, possibly. If we're assuming monthly, just to go with our example here, January, you, you would have to collect the sales tax in January and then pay it sometime in February. 
well, if you're on a cash basis and you're waiting until everything clears the bank, how you know you might not be using a payable to do that. So normally you would record this every time you have an invoice, and, and that would be increasing the accounts receivable by the 547, increasing sales by only 500, and then a payable account of 4750. So you have to have that payable, which is kind of like an accrual account. If you just basically record everything to sales, now your sales are overstated by the 4750. And then when you make the payment on a cash basis, you could basically back it out of sales. So in other words, uh, if I was to calculate this in Excel, we said it was uh, the sales price was 500. And then the tax is going to be uh, 9.5.095, which I can make into a percentage like so. And then we could say, uh, what happened here? Give me a decimal. And then we can multiply that out that's going to be the tax. So the amount, so this is the tax rate. So the amount received, received is going to be the tax plus the sales price. That's going to be this plus this. Okay. So, so what, if, what if we had the entire amount of sales then, and, and I go back over to like the income statement here and we say that sales is 21,630. 21,630 is what we've got including, so 21,630, and that includes uh, the, the, the sales tax in it. So now I know this number here and I'm trying to back into basically the sales tax and, and the beginning number. One way you could, you, you could do that is you can use the same formula. I can take the same formula. Let's put the 21,630 down here. And let's say I have to back out this 9.5%. Obviously, you could use algebra, right? I can write this out as an algebraic equation for the unknown. Uh, uh, or I can say I'm going to uh, put this information in here. And the bottom line number, this number needs to be that, right? But I'm just going to, I'm going to keep the formula. I'm going to keep the formula here. And I'm going to change this number by adjusting the, the top line number, right? This number is the one that needs to change. So I'm going to delete that number there, but I still have the formula down here. So then I'm going to use a little tool within Excel just to show you this neat little tool that they have that can be useful. So then I'm going to go to the data tab over here. And then we're going to go to the forecast and the what if analysis. Now notice I'm not on the cell I'm dealing with. I'm just going to go to what if and then this little goal seek thing. I like this goal seek. And then we're going to set what we want to do is set this cell. We're saying, hey, I want to make that cell B. And I'm going to hard code this number 21,630, what it should be, what I know it should be by changing this cell. And because they're connected, it'll just basically do whatever it has to do to make this number, uh, change it to make this number be the 21,630. So once again, it's saying, hey, would, would you set this cell, please, to be this hard coded number by changing this cell up top, which is connected to it using the formula. And then I could say, okay. And then it'll kind of back into that right so in in this case then if this was our sales including the sales tax and we had to back out the 9.5 percent that's one way you can kind of think of it right that means that the sales before sales tax is going to be 19,753 times the times the tax rate that means the sales tax would be this amount and that means the full amount that we have incurred or recorded in sales is the 21,630 in other words the sales are overstated by 21,630 and in February, if we're on a cash basis, we'll write a check, basically, if we're to the to the government, to the state, for the 1,876 in this example problem, right? And over the two month period, and we'll write that check to basically a contra sales account, basically reducing the sales because we overstated the sales by that amount. Then we'd write the check, in essence, reducing the sales. So that's one, you know, one way you can kind of think about how you how are you going to work into sales tax if you have to deal with sales tax if you're on kind of a cash basis method waiting until the items clear the bank and you're not you're not entering the invoices right how are you going to be calculating the sales tax so just a couple things to think about if you don't have sales tax if you're in the U.S. and you only have service items here then once again uh, you may not be subject to sales tax and that's not an issue you can use the information straight from the bank feeds record it as income and uh, you're basically good to go. So that's it for now. Let's get out of here.